everyone, I hope you're all doing so well and welcome to this little video about how to save money when oil painting. I do hope you like this video and thank you so much for your wonderful comments on my last video and if you're new don't forget to subscribe. My first tip is when you're buying your oil paint to start by buying it in a smaller size. So it's really a good idea because very often oil paints come in really big tubes and you may never end up finishing them and you may decide to try another paint brand in the future. So I think if you're trying out a brand for the very first time, then you should look into buying the smaller tube. So this is a Gamblin oil colour. Now I have not finished this and this isn't even halfway finished. I've had it for absolutely ages, years. And so these paint tubes last such a long time. Oil paint is so concentrated that it's you know, it can last forever. So uh, basically what I would do is to look for the uh, quantity <laughs> in the bottle. And this is 37 millilitres, but you can get them in even, sm even smaller sizes, certain paints. Some paints come in even 20 millilitres. So I would investigate and try, if you're on a budget, try and find small sizes of paint. The worst thing you can do when you're starting out is to buy a huge paint set because you may not like the paint for a start, but also it's just so expensive to buy those really big paint sets. They often come in really, uh, in colours that you may not necessarily end up using or even wanting to use in your type of art style. And I also think that it is important to think about your palette, which brings me on to my next tip, which is to think and consider about using a limited palette when you are beginning. I use a limited palette now and I have been painting for years and so a limited palette is a great consideration for any artist at any level but particularly when you're on a budget you don't want to buy every single colour of the rainbow and then suddenly think oh actually I don't really like this paint or I don't like this style or I don't really want to paint anymore because that would be a disaster. Some examples of limited palettes you could consider. Number one, the Zorn palette. It always sounds like a sci-fi character, but it's nothing like that, unfortunately. Uh, Anders Zorn was an artist who created this concept of always working in this very, very narrow, limited palette. So it's a very interesting consideration. Uh, the colours are yellow ochre, uh, cadmium yellow light, which is a replacement for vermilion, ivory black, I believe, and titanium white. I hope I've got that correct. And he was a, a 19th century artist, but a lot of old classical art has that amazing uniformity within it because the artist is using a limited number of colours. It's actually a really, really amazing way to work. And very often when I lay out my colours before I'm about to paint, I don't enjoy, uh, I, I never lay out all my colours anymore. I just become so much more streamlined because I have to paint within a limited time frame and I like to know which colours to go to. So on my palette on a daily basis, there will be six or less colours. So it's something that you don't need to worry about thinking, oh, if I want to start oil painting, you know, then it's going to cost me so much to buy all the paints when in that many artists are using hardly any paint at all. And again, you want to look into the brands, do tons of research before you buy your paints. I would personally buy a small number of paints from an exceptional paint brand rather than buying a huge set from a much cheaper brand, like a student grade brand. I just don't see the point of that. I think you might as well, if you're thinking about oil painting professionally or even on a regular basis, even if it's not professional, you want a really nice, creamy, buttery, amazing paint that doesn't have tons of fillers and is not totally toxic, it doesn't stink, which all those cheap paints, they always smell so nasty and people then think, oh, I never want to oil paint because it smells so bad. So find a really good paint brand. Uh, some I would suggest, uh, especially ones that do sort of the smaller paint tubes. Old Holland is an absolutely incredible one. Of course, don't buy the most expensive pigments from Old Holland, but many of their earth colours and their primaries are much less, a much less amount. And actually, they're very comparable to buying acrylics. I think there is a myth that oil paint is so, so much more expensive. It's only certain pigments 
that are super expensive and you don't need those super expensive pigments when you are starting out or when you're on a budget and even if you do try these really expensive pigment pigments in the future you may not like them you may not necessarily want to use them very often cadmiums are extremely expensive in you know some of the top brands but cadmiums actually have a very very bright color to them and if you're painting earthy landscapes or something or sort of muted portraits you won't necessarily need those you know really expensive pigments so it's just uh, something to consider you don't want to consider the zorn palette which is completely understandable because it is quite a unique palette then you would want to think about just buying a as a sort of bare minimum essentials to start with uh, a black a white yellow blue red and burnt umber some people discount the black but personally I cannot work without a black so I think you should buy a black and always give yourself the option of having it but you see that's a very small amount of colours and the mixing opportunities you will have with those colours is endless. Next up how to save money on palettes. Disposable palettes if you're using them regularly are expensive and also if you want like a really fancy wood palette you know those huge ones that sometimes artists use sometimes you see in sort of Bob Ross type videos I know people love the idea of these sort of huge wood palettes they're great but once again you will have to clean them <laughs> if you don't like cleaning and if you want to get disposable palettes tin foil or plastic so obviously you don't want to buy plastic but plastic in the form of a lid so a yogurt lid a bit big carton of yogurt for example anything like that where you're about to throw something away and put it in the recycling you can use as a palette because a pl piece of plastic has a very smooth surface even packaging like say packaging of I don't know some pens for example they come in those plasticky packaging things you can use as a palette because it's such a smooth surface and I use tinfoil basically I cut them into small pieces I prefer this over any other palette. I just like the ease of use. I can then throw it after I've used it and I cut the foil into really, really tiny pieces. It's just amazing and it's really cheap. Canvases, this is the most expensive area. This is the place where you will cry when you see the price of some canvases, especially really nice ones. This is frequently the area where I cry when I think it's time to buy some more canvases and oh god, my bank account. <laughs> and so you can, if you want to paint on a regular basis, look into painting on much cheaper surfaces where you can create studies and they're not sort of going to be your finished, absolute finished works or they could be finished works if you paint something really, really amazing and you want to sell it. So there are several options for this. First up, we do have paper, uh, very much a huge thing now. It never used to be, but there are so many incredible papers on the market for oils and oil actually works so well on paper. It really is surprising. I prefer to use oil on paper than I do oil on like a cheap canvas board, for example but I will show you some cheap canvas boys if that's your thing. Uh, and so one that I really recommend and really like, which I'm nearly out of actually, is the Strathmore oil painting paper. Here we have, I actually did a full on review of this and I do really, really like this. It has an amazing texture. It's like a linen texture. So most of these types of papers have either a linen texture or a canvas texture. And I've, I think I've only tried the canvas texture ones, uh, no sorry the linen texture ones and they're really really nice. It does feel like painting on a medium grain linen which is great and you can get some really vibrant work. So I'm going to show you a couple of paintings that I've been painting recently and as you can see the colour it comes out so vibrantly and really beautiful and it really is just an amazing surface to work on. The paper is extremely thick and I'm just going to show you the back. There is no seepage whatsoever on the back. And this is an archival. That all, are, all the ones I have are archival papers. So they've got a really beautiful finish. And they are so 
user friendly. Now what you can do is buy a bigger pad and then cut the pad into pieces as so then buy a much bigger pad and then cut them in half and then you save even more money so I didn't do that intentionally but this was the only size available so then I just I now just cut them in half and most of these pads are usually around the tech sort of under 15 pounds and they come in about 10 to 12 sheets usually something like that and so if you really want to save money I would recommend buying the bigger size and then cutting them because that seems to be cheaper and if you want to experiment and try them out many of them come in a really really small size so this is the cancer of the Gellis and this is a really small uh, size as I just said and this is great because if you don't know if paper is going to be for you then you've got a really small uh, testing round but you don't even need to buy a pad because they do sell them separately at Jackson's as far as I know. Another idea which is great is canvas blocks this always really confused me. I remember thinking, what is a block whenever I used to see it on sale? And I think it confuses a lot of people. And what it basically means is it's a canvas that would ordinarily be on a roll. Uh, this is, must be cotton canvas. And it is then glued to the side, but, uh, on each side. And what you do when you get canvas block like this, well, it's not actually a block. It's basically just a bunch of canvas <laughs> glued together. You then get a knife and loosen up the sheet. I'm just gonna see if I can try and do this. You loosen up the sheet and then that actually, you can even do it with your hand. As you can see, this is peeling off. And you basically just peel it off like this. And there you have it. And then you have your piece of canvas and you just tear it off here as well. And these are really great because this is a proper sort of canvas feel and a proper actual piece of canvas. So you can, and this is a really great, by a really great brand, an Italian brand called Bellardi, and Bellardi are available at Jackson's Art Supplies. I'm pretty sure that's the only place I've ever seen them on sale though, which is a shame. I hope that they become more well-known because they do the most incredible canvases, and their canvases are not like extortionate, but they are really, really high quality. Some of their stretch canvases are expensive though. And so the, this is a really beautiful surface. The colour comes out really, really bright on these blocks. Mine is uh, obviously depleted. I've used up quite a lot, but it's really a great way. And you can also, if you are considering, if you prefer just painting on canvas in general, if you want to save money, you can buy canvas rolls. And that's a whole other thing. And a whole other thing where you can buy rolls and then cut pieces of the canvas and then paint on them and then obviously glue them to a board. It is, just be aware though, that this can be lead to a few complications, just because if you're uh, gluing, say for example, a painting that you've painted on onto a board, sometimes it can be a little bit risky if you, you know, sort of muck up the painting, <laughs> like put too much glue on it and then it could all go wrong. But otherwise, uh, that is something. Finally, you can think about buying things like this, which is canvas, panel or canvas board I would say it's probably a board yes you would call it a board this is by the brand Loxley I believe a British brand and these are probably the more high quality cheap uh, canvas boards that I've tried because there are so many of these around and what happens is quite often they have hardly any gesso on them they're normally made of cotton and they're basically stuck to a piece of cardboard and then normally very very rough or like sort of have a really it's very hard to explain the texture. It's almost like painting on sandpaper or something. And they, again, they're quite off-putting because they're so rough and your paint just, there's, you can't get any detail whatsoever. What I've done is I've actually primed this with gesso. So the that's just to add sort of like an extra layer of primer because otherwise they just have hardly any primer on them. But these are definitely a more high quality canvas board and they don't have the really sandpapery quality of the super cheap ones, but these are cheap. They're probably like two or three pounds. I'm not entirely sure how I how much I spent on this, and they're often on sale as well. And I think that buying boards like this is very good for when you want to do something a little bit more than just a, a study, and you're considering maybe framing something, then finding a board like this is really, really handy. I wish that there were more 
boards like this that had a better quality but to finally have to save money on brushes I don't like shopping for brushes probably my least favorite art product to shop for because most art stores online or in store have about a thousand brushes and especially if you don't know a great deal about brushes I know a lot more now but I still feel that because there's so many I will always be trying to catch up on what actually is the best brush and you will see so many different types of brushes so many different artists have different styles and they're like using different brushes and it's really really hard to find the right brush my I always say to people, don't buy huge brush sets. Sometimes you get brushes, like 20 brushes, and it's better, don't buy cheap brushes for a start because cheap brushes are just a complete waste of time. Much like really, really cheap canvas boards, cheap brushes, you will end up just throwing them away. They're not even worth any effort. In fact, cheap brushes should be banned. <laughs> They're just a complete waste, and it's terrible because I think the amount of money I've actually wasted on cheap brushes, you get sucked in to this like, oh, buy, uh, you know, there's like 20 brushes for 9.99, and you think that must be a good deal, but it never is, it never is. The best thing to do is to buy very small sets, if you've sort of read reviews about them, so sort of five brushes or seven brushes, or what I think is the best thing to do is actually to buy them individually and to check then what type of brush you actually like because they come in all different types of you know sable synthetic then there's bristle and there's oh there's like a million different ones and you can get animal hair and then sort of then you have to think about whether you want to you know go down the animal hair route or you want to go sort of more vegan type brushes and all this stuff so test them out when you're in a shop of course we can't do that right now so i would say go online and just buy one or two brushes from different reputable brands and then just test them out. Of course you could look for reviews but it's really hard to know because so many people like really really hard brushes and then there are so many people who hate them and I personally use very soft synthetic brushes. I can give you some recommendations, I mean I really like the Akoya brushes and not that that means anything, but uh, there's the Akoya by, I believe it must be by Jackson, so it's for their own brand. And they're sort of very long handle brushes. So that's my recommendation. They're not that expensive. And I buy them individually as and when I need them. And I really like them because they have a very soft uh, feel, but they also have a kind of density in the center of them. So they have a good bounce. And they also come in very, very fine shapes. So they're very, you can get some very, very fine detail ones. Not only liner, but very, very tiny brushes. You know, I like to do a lot of details. But if you are somebody who likes, you know, really stipple and really, uh, you know, you like the really tough brushes, the hog hairs, there are as well, then don't listen to me. <laughs> That's it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed and I really hope that it was helpful and that you, it helps you on your artistic journey. And please let me know what your favourite art materials are and how you save money when painting. Please subscribe if you're new and don't forget to follow me on Instagram because why not? And I will see you next week. Take care guys.